Building the perfect commander mana base can be tricky, but it doesn't have to be expensive. We're going to go over how to build the perfect commander mana base for $20 or less. I'm Mia, and this is going to be a long video. I'm BZ. Hope you're ready, because we're sponsored by Card Kingdom. That's the website where you can go to buy and, and, and buy and buy cards and buy other product as well. And when you buy enough... You get free shipping on it, which is not something other places can say, other these redacted websites. I also admire them coming in a single package at a reasonable time, unlike whoever else might be doing this. I don't know who you could be talking about, but it's awesome because every card that we're going to be mentioning in this video can be bought on Card Kingdom. We're also sponsored by Dragon Shield, best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. If you use the code... Nerds. At checkout, you can save 5% of your real money tax dollars on your entire order, including the 25th anniversary dual matte art sleeves include the Great Wave and the Starry Night, and they're gorgeous and they sparkle. They are all of those things and more. We're also sponsored by Moxfield, but hold on, who's that? We'll tell you later. Guess where we'll tell you and you win nothing. Also, we have a Patreon. It's a great way to see other content that we can't put on YouTube because it's not going to get any views. But you think we still think it's pretty cool. And if you want to go see it, you can pay five, ten dollars and get access to a bunch of stuff. At this point, I would say if you threw five or ten bucks at the Patreon for a month or two, you would get access to like thirty videos. Yeah, I'd say you'd get at least access to like twenty-five plus hours of content. Sorry, yeah, like fifteen videos and then like and then like ten podcast episodes. We have a little bit of everything there. Go check it out. So we've got a huge review of every type of commander mana base for under $20 here ahead of us. There's a couple things we got to hammer out before we get into it so that we all know that we're talking about the same thing. How's this going to work? We are going to assume for the sake of uh, ease, easiness that there's going to be 35 lands in a deck. You can, of course, adjust higher or lower depending on if you play more or less lands on average. 35 felt like a pretty good baseline. I think that's pretty standard unless you're going a very low curve or you are trying to hit like landfall triggers and that sort of thing. We're also going to be using Card Kingdom prices because they are our sponsor as we mentioned a little bit earlier and we're going to suggest lands that we like for each type of mana base. This is going from mono colored to five colored, everything in between and then we will show you a link from a site that you'll be hearing from later of a mana base for that type of deck that is $20 or less. Yeah, we're going to show it on screen, but we're also going to have all of those example mana bases linked in the description. So if you ever want to pause and check out what we think a good example would look like, you can just open that up while you're watching the video or in the background or after the video. The 35 lands includes MDFCs, and this is $20 as of the time that we are recording this. If you watch this six months in advance, it might be more, it might be less. We can't be held accountable. Yeah, most of them, I think, right now are less than $20. So as a rule of thumb, uh, to move on, we try not to play more than 12 tap lands. I think once you start going past 12 and maybe even in the 10, 11 range, decks start to feel clunky, start to feel like you're missing out on key turns or you're, you're going to be stuck and have to play a less efficient turn because your lands are just not entering on tap like they need to. So none of these mana bases we're going to propose have more than 12 tap lands. We'll go over specifically what kinds of tap lands we like. And in every section for every different color mana base, we're going to be talking about traps that we think are totally worth avoiding. And we'll get into that when it happens. So we're going to start out with probably the easiest uh, mana base to construct, but there's still a lot of things to consider about it. This is the one color mana base. Now, if you are building a deck that has a strict budget overall, like $25, $50, $100, whatever, uh, you can definitely sacrifice some percentage points and give up lands and utility lands and other lands that make whatever your one color is to just save money. I think that building one and two de color decks on a budget is the easiest because you can slot in so many basics to save yourself those little like percentage points. But if you do have a set budget for the mana base, or if you have a few dollars left over, you can definitely splurge on some stronger lands. There are a lot to choose from, and I really like playing around with them. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing a monocolor mana base, $20 is actually, I think, a lot to play with. So if you have that type of, of budget, totally. You could spend $10 on a single land and still have a lot of other things going on. Um, I think... Clearly, mostly you're going to have basic lands. If you're a budget deck and you're monocolor, you're mostly going to be basic lands. I mean, even if you're not budget, you're going to be mostly basic lands. We recommend about 25. That's where our monocolor budget decks tend to fall. There are a lot of utility lands that you can put into single color decks. So we're going to go by card by card and check it out and see what we like. The first one we want to talk about is hideaway lands. 
Now, this is not every hideaway land in this cycle. We only really like the Naya ones. This is Mosswort Bridge at 50 cents, Windbrisk Heights at 50 cents, and Spine Rock Knoll at $1.29. We find that these conditions are easily met if you're playing the monocolor strategy, and you can get those effects for very cheap. Yeah, and when we talk about, oh, you don't want to include too many tap lands or your deck's going to get clunky, that's not even really an issue that comes up with monocolor decks because... How do you even get more than like six into this? So it's not a problem that these are going to enter tap. We're going to have no issue slotting them into our curve. And all of them are basically card advantage. Once you get the thing going, attacking with three and having 10 power is so trivially easy. And if you have a good enough turn, great. You get to use Spine Rock Null and deal seven damage and then cast a spell for free. We're cheating mana cost. We're cheating timing restrictions. I think these lands are all basically staples. Dude, I don't even, I love Spine Rock Null because it, you, don't, you are not even the one who has to deal seven damage. Someone else can have a very awesome combat turn, deal seven to your opponent, and then you can cast your spell for free, provided you kept that up and one extra mana. That happens actually a fair amount, uh, honestly. The next up is LTR lands, the Lord of the Rings lands. They all enter untapped. If you control a legend, they do pretty good stuff. I think all five of them are worth including in a monocolored budget deck because you're just gaining these little percentage points, uh, swapping out a mountain for Mines of Moria. It's like a no-brainer. It's very good. It's going to help your deck be that much better, especially when you only have 20 bucks to throw at the mana base. I think uh, Baradura is the cheapest at $1.29, and the most expensive is Minas Tirith at $6.50. We are not going to recommend too many lands above $5 because we're trying to make a budget mana base. But if you're mono white and you have 20 bucks for your mana base, I think 650 on Minas Tirith is not the, not the end of the world. I think the Lord of the Rings lands are very nice, especially if your commander comes down very cheaply. For instance, I have a no-budget Silvala deck, and I'm still playing the Shire in it because Silvala is always coming down turn two. It will always come in untapped because I can consistently get that effect. Yeah, so if non-budget decks are scooping these up and they're happy to play them, of course, for $1 or $2, with the exception of Minas Tirith, we will take them in budget decks as well. I also think Cycling lands are, are honestly fine. They just enter tapped, and you can cycle Cycle them, discard them for one mana, and draw a card. You know, they're all... They're, they're, they're like secluded areas. You know, it's like secluded step, lonely sandbar. They're all... They're all tucked away, and you can <laughs> you can cycle them away, and it's, it's fine. I think entering tapped just about makes up for the fact that in the late game, this is not a land. You're just going to cycle it. I think that if you have a lot of natural card draw in your deck, maybe you don't want this. But if you are in colors that are hurting for that, like red and white, this is a very good inclusion. Next up is the original Zendikar rare cycle. Some of these are terrible, like uh, the blue one and Magosi. And some of them are very expensive, like Velikut. So we can't count either of those because Velikut by itself is over 20. But we have Oren Reef, 50 cents. It can put counters on your green creatures. Emiria is like a classic build around. This is $15. Now you could just throw, because we're mono white, right? We're talking about only monocolor decks. You could throw Emiria and 29 planes in your deck fill it out with a couple of utility lands, and still have a pretty sweet uh, engine. So I wanted to mention it, even though it's 15 And then Crypt of Agadim, $8. It's kind of similar. You're going to want to be able to maybe tutor for it or lean on it a little bit. But it's 8 bucks, and it makes uh, black for each creature, each black creature in your graveyard. These are definitely cards to consider when building monocolor decks. Especially that Orin Reef. I mean, green loves to be putting counters on stuff, and it's 50 cents. That is a great deal. But with the other ones, if you are trying to get a certain type of mana base, maybe you're prepping your budget to slam in a Field of the Dead for your monocolor deck, You, these are very good lands to have. The next one is the Throne of Eldraine lands. These enter untapped with three or more lands of a certain type of the basic that we're talking about. The cheapest is Dwarven Mine at 35 cents, and the most expensive is Mystic Sanctuary at $2. Honestly, all of these have really good utility. I love Mystic Sanctuary to be able to get back instants and sorceries to the top. And Dwarven Mine, you just make a little guy. It's pretty cool. Right, and when we're playing 25 mountains or 25 planes or whatever it is, they're pretty much always going to enter untapped. It's hard to imagine a scenario where either you can't just play this tap turn one or you somehow don't have three mountains to have Dwarven Mine enter untapped. So I think these cards are very easy to include. Their upside, their like upside is kind of small-ish. But we want the we want to get these percentage points. We want to have our mana base do something. I think you're giving up a fair bit if you just include 35 mountains in your red deck. And now you just have this like true fact about the game where none of your lands ever do anything except tap for mana. So every time you draw too many lands, you will be far behind. I mean, I think the land slot is one of the most important slots to consider. I think lands are like veggies. You know, you got to eat your veggies to grow big and strong. And I think that having a good mana base as long, like, you know, more than just basic will really help you increase your win percentage later in, like, as you play. We are two players who cannot get enough vegetables, cannot get enough 1% gains. I'm all in for that. That's why when we said we're starting with 35 land assumptions here, 
we want 25 of them to be basics. That gives me at least 10 spots for utility, and I'm going to use them all. We also have Hour of Devastation at Deserts. They enter untapped. They make colorless if you don't need the color, and if you do need the color, you can make the color just for paying a life. And they have mild upside. Their upsides are not going to be used that often, but I just want my lands to do something, gosh darn it. They range from 35 cents to 79 cents, and I can't, I can't think of one where I... I would never recommend it. I think they're all okay. Plus, now would be the time to scoop them up in this budget range because they just got reprinted with Yuma. I think that's like so nice to be able to have these budgety lands and just have them hit your colors. There's also the Modern Horizon 3 lands. We love Modern Horizons 3. We talk about it all the time. It's one of my favorite sets, if not the best set for Commander. But the cheapest one is Monumental Henge at 60 cents and the most expensive is Arena of Glory at 7.99. These do a bunch of stuff. I spec'd on a- uh, The black one? Yeah, Spy Masters Vault a little while ago. They, they're very cheap to get their effects and they just slot in instead of your basics. I think these are great. I, I love these. And they enter untapped if you have a land of the type that they are. So like Monumental Henge just needs you to have a planes. How trivially easy is that? So this is basically just planes with upside. I don't know if I'd recommend Arena of Glory at $8. That's seeing like modern play right now, but the rest of them, go for it. They are very cheap, they are very useful, and they will all impact the game, which I think is great. And now, the other thing about monocolor deck lists is we want to add a lot of utility lands. How about MDFCs? We are those count lands those. and spells? They are lands or spells. We count them as utility lands because they are a land some percentage of the time. So there's a couple mana bases that you're going to build in these monocolor decks that have like 30 lands but also five MDFCs. I would say, I would recommend literally every MDFC that's ever existed with the small exception of like four of them. And they're not even worth going over, but pretty much all of them are great. Um, Shatter Skull Smashing and Agadim's Awakening and Seagate Restoration are the mythic ones that we can't really fit in to super hyper budget decks with like $20. Uh, but I would say as a rule of thumb, if you're playing a monocolor deck, at least if you ask me, there's literally no reason why you should not be playing at least four MDFCs, especially the MH3 ones. I think that some colors have it a little bit easier than others when it comes to MDFC, sorry, blue. But I think that overall, it is great to be able to have these come in as lands and spells. We meme about it a lot, but it is true to have that versatility is super nice, especially late in the game. MDFCs are invaluable. We will continue to talk about them for this video, but this is our entry for the monocolored ones. This trend of playing MDFCs will continue into two color mana bases, but we'll get to that. Right now we gotta talk about colorless utility lands. Now the there's a little bit more of a downside to playing these because you have a little bit less chance of hitting your colors. However, if we are monocolored, that risk is not very real. We only ever need two or three mountains and then we can cast most of our red spells. But these are gonna be cards we are still trying to jam in our deck. Uh, eventually there is a limit on colorless lands before you can stop casting your spells, but it's not a real one that you're ever going to encounter in monocolor. I'd say if you have five or six out of 35 lands, that is a fine number. And if you just have all of those lands in your hand, you just mulligan them away. Yeah. I don't know why I said it like that. I would say <laughs> you can even push it. Go for like six, seven, eight. <laughs> well, I mean like don't have 34, like don't put in 34 wastes, right? Like That's fair. you won't be able to cast your red commander, but with colorless utility lands, there are a lot that are really awesome. The first one is Rogue's Passage. Making something unblockable, especially for 79 cents, this is great. I used to run in like a lower power poison deck before I got like super, super sweaty. But like your Voltron decks, this is, a plus it's target creature can't be blocked, not target creature you control. So if it's someone else's that needs to swing in and you just want some death on the board, you got it. Great way to add a spell-like effect onto a land that is not gonna cost you much because we're in monocolor. Uh, Buried Ruin next up. 60 cents for this one. This can bring back artifacts. I think Buried Ruin might be a little underplayed because you don't need that many artifacts in your deck for me to start wanting to play this card. It's a land. I'm monocolor. It's not going to be a problem to just throw this in, tap it for mana most of the time, maybe 20% of the time. If I can cash this in 20% of the time for a relevant artifact, I think it's worth playing. I think so too. If you're playing any artifact win con or if you're playing anything more than just like mana rocks i'd say that this could be a really good card the next one is war room at two dollars and 49 cents i put this in anything that can either gain life or anything that is two or one colors i think card draw is very hard to fit in sometimes with certain types of decks especially combat based ones that i like to play so being able to have that in the land slot and also have it come in untapped for mana is a very nice thing to have if we have a 20 dollars mana base 
and we're playing one color, start with this. Literally just start with this card. It was well worth 10% of your mana base budget. Whenever you have it, you can pay a couple mana if you have nothing better to do and one life to just start drawing cards. And it's very, very strong. Bonders Enclave, kind of similar, but maybe a little harder to trigger. It's uh, 99 cents and you need a power four or greater. But once you have that, it's the same thing as War Room. So if you've got big boys, if you're green or maybe red, this is also just kind of a free roll. Demolition Field is $1.29. And if you need targeted land destruction, this is a great one that does not also ramp your opponents, which we'll, I... We'll get there. Yeah, we are not a big fan of that effect. This is another staple, I think, that is almost a must include in these monocolor decks because when you come across a really annoying land and you can't kill it, the game warps a little bit and you, feel, you start to fall behind. Field of the Dead is a classic example. This also becomes more essential the more your deck's going to try to punch up. Like if you're on a $50 budget and you really want to just pull this deck out, even though nobody else is playing budget, now with cards like this, you can and you feel less bad about it. Especially if you're destroying like a Nykthos or something, you Ooh. really need the power to be able to go against certain lands and land destruction in small, small doses is okay. Yeah, another classic one, Myriad Landscape. It enters tapped and you can sacrifice it to get two basics that share a type. That's the only basic we're playing. We're playing all islands, so we're going to go get this. I think this is a must include as well in monocolored. It's a little bit of ramp. Entering tapped again, like we said, because there's no other competition for tap lands really is not a big deal. So I think this is an easy inclusion. Now, Mirrored Landscape is a card we will maybe be questioning as we get higher in the number of colors but right now at one, I'm so in. And at zero, you shouldn't be playing it. Urza's Cave <laughs> at $2.79. Being able to find your best land is something that we put spells in our deck to do. So why wouldn't you do it with a land slot too? I think this card is great. It's great if you have at least one or two really high value lands. Like if you're building the 30 land Emiria, the Sky Ruin deck, you should best definitely play Urza's Cave. I have a budget deck that's mono black, and I play Cabal Stronghold in that deck. And I need to ASAP go get Urza's Cave. I need to have one to put into that deck. It's like on my to-do list. Because, of course, if I'm putting all this budget into, you know, a $12 land, I would pay $3 or less to have a second copy of that, basically, in my deck. So definitely get Urza's Cave in, only if you've got some bangers lurking around. If you maybe have, you know, a budget deck, but you open the Nykthos in a pack, and you put that in there, go get Urza's Cave right away. Roadside Reliquary is also another way to get a little bit of card draw in your deck. 35 cents, and if you pay two tap and sack it, and if you have an enchantment or an art and an artifact, you cut two cards out of it. Yeah, if you've got one of the one or the other, you only draw one card. But this is a land that, let's face it, until you are out of gas, this is a land. But once you need help or you're digging for a board wipe or something, this is in most cases just draw two cards. Artifacts and enchantments are the stickiest types of permanence. It's not crazy to have a mana rock and some enchantment that powers up your deck in play. So when you have that going on, having a land that sacrifices to draw two is pretty unique. There's not really any other lands that do that. Air Archway is $1.29 and Guildless Commons is 99 cents. Basically, these will tap for two, but you have to bounce something back to your hand and they tap for two colorless. Some decks really want these lands that enter and bounce themselves in most cases or bounce something else because they have ways to untap them or they want to get little value out of it. And it's tricky because two color bounce lands are what you think of the most. But we actually do have two that have no colors. So you can play them in any monocolor deck. Keep them in mind. You probably won't automatically need them, but they are pretty good. If you start an opening hand and it has guildless commons and two mountains, you now have a, a hand that produces four mana, but only tied up in three cards. So it is relevant. It does it does sort of draw you a card. Especially if you have things like Spelunking or things that make your lands come in untapped, these can tap for two immediately, and that can be some sufficient ramp for your deck. Another one that's a little slow, but I still like it. Ominous Cemetery is 35 cents. You can pay five tap and sack it to shuffle a creature into its owner's library. If you're in a pinch, I don't mind having a removal spell on my land. You're not going to use it proactively on turn five, but in the late game, if you're struggling with a, some kind of big threat, you can even hold it up, threaten the activation of it, maybe get some value out of it, or just have this, it's nice to have, you know, an emergency backdoor escape route for some threat you can't beat. I might put this in a deck where there's a lot of flash or things I can do at instant speed yeah. because I feel like five is a lot to keep up in any sort of scenario where you have a lot of creatures or sorcery speed stuff. But in a pinch, I can see how it works. It's definitely a break glass in case of emergency type of card that you just swap out, you know, an island for and it's not the end of the world. Next up, Lazotep Quarry, a card I've liked a lot, even in non-budget. It's four bucks and you can pay a, a, admittedly a lot of mana. But you turn a creature 
from your graveyard into just this eternalized version of itself. So it gives you like reuse of ETBs, get your threats back in play. It even upgrades little guys into four fours. And this is maybe a reason to play some of those other deserts because it doesn't sacrifice itself, it sacrifices a desert. So if you've got Hashep Oasis in your deck, great. It'll do a little bit of something, but when you have Lazotep Quarry, you can sacrifice that and get an extra use out of it. Having this in a pinch is super nice. And just overall, I do like eternalizing things. It's just fun. I think so too. Bolas had it right. It's just a fun, it's a fun move. What's next? The next one is Karn's Bastion at $2.79. This will help you proliferate if you need that. And there are a lot of decks that can really profit off that. Sure, the price is a little bit steep, but if you're playing very fast strategies like Stompy counters decks or Poison overall and you need something in a pinch, this is great in your mana base. Yeah, uh, charge counters plus one plus one is going to be the primary one. It's hard to get too fancy with counters in a monocolor deck, so mostly plus one, plus one, or poison. But once you once you are in those decks, this is obviously a must include. It's better than War Room when you're when you're poisoning people. And lastly, a card I love. Maybe it's a little janky, but I love Drown Yard Temple because you can pay three and bring it back from the graveyard uh, tapped. So if you discard this or you mill it and then you activate its ability. You just ramped. Obviously, in green, this is y irrelevant, but I just love ramping. I, I want more lands in play. In my blue deck, I can play Frantic Search, discard this, and then use the three mana to bring it back. I mean, that's Cultivate. Wow, the man who likes the graveyard likes the graveyard land? Crazy. This is Cultivate. Uh, obviously, 50 cents. Pick it up. It's not going to be the best land, but uh, I wanted to mention it last. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But we are moving on to traps. These are lands that a lot of people put into their decks thinking that they can, and you can, but I think that they are put into decks more often than they're worth, and I think they will slow you down in the long run. Either we'll say they're overplayed or we don't like them at all. First one, I think it's just overplayed. Reliquary Tower has homes. But not as many homes as if you go look it up on EDH Rec. I think most of the time you can just forget this even exists. I don't even think this is that budget friendly. I think this is a couple bucks. But yeah, you really don't need Reliquary Tower in your decks all that often. If you're non-blue, I would, in this case, because we're monocolored, forget it. And if you're blue, maybe. Not definitely, maybe. I mean, I just genuinely want you to think about how many times you discard to hand size. And if it's multiple times per game, this could be good. But if you don't do it that often, this is not worth the slot in your deck. Just put in some colored mana or one of the other types of uh, lands that we had instead. Yeah, because when you keep eight cards, now that you have Reliquary Tower, when you keep eight card hand, it's not like you drew a card. It's like you didn't discard your worst card. And that's a little bit, that's a little bit different to me. Next up card, I think you should never play ever. I think it's horrible unless you're actively trying to help your opponents. It is Field of Ruin. We alluded to this. It's, it's Demolition Field, right? It looks like it is, but it says each player searches. So instead of just me blowing up your land and then us both getting refunded one so that we're now all even, except I took out your utility land, also, the other two players who are not involved at all go get a land free of charge, and I think that's a good way to lose games. I don't like ramping my opponents, especially if they didn't do anything to earn it, or I'm not playing a deck that's like group hug. So I don't want to staple that onto my lands just to get an effect that I can do for cheaper. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you build 100 commander decks, it is possible that I would recommend Field of Ruin in zero of them. Uh, next up, Temple of the False God, not a card we are very high on. And ultimately, I find it to just be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. You can try it if you want. It's just not a card that... It, it, the the downsides pretty much negate the upside. So you're kind of left with a... Eh. I mean, some people swear by it, but I am the type of person who has always gotten burned by this. It's always in my opening hand, and I mull it away, and then it's always in my opening hand again. <laughs> I don't think that this card is very good, and if you do need the bounce, like that double mana, you should be playing the bounce lands instead. So you, you either swear by it or you swear at it. I think so. I think people have very strong opinions on this card. I don't think that's like very weird to say. You say Temple of the False God. I've never heard someone go like, yeah, it's fine. I played it in a couple decks. No, yeah. <laughs> Someone either is like, that's the best card ever, or I hate you right now. Next up is Arch of Arazka. You can pay five and tap it to draw a card. That's a lot for a card. I don't find me myself ever activating this. I have given this a fair shot. I've played this in multiple budget decks, and I just started not including it anymore because I got other cool utility lands, other things like the MH3 goodies and the MDFCs to just where I'm just not excited about Arch of Raska. Honestly, I never have five mana to spare. I'm trying to do everything with my mana every single turn. So if I have five mana to spare, I am in a pinch, and I like really don't want to be drawing just one card with it. Right, like five mana with the Ominous Cemetery to answer a very problematic creature, I can understand. 
to draw one card, I don't think it's very uh, very good. How about two mana cycling lands? I am not a big fan of two mana cycling lands. They come in tapped already, which is, you know, a downside of a land versus a basic. But also two mana to cycle, I think, is very expensive. One mana is fine just in case you have a little bit of extra mana. But two mana is a full play. You know, this could be a mana dork. This could be like, you know, uh, a cantrip. This can be a multitude of things. And I think that's the equivalent of taking like an early turn off. I just don't think that it's a very good rate. It's harder to fit in a cycling cost for two. I mean, it is twice as expensive as the other lands that were we're not even super high on the cycling lands. We're okay. At least we think they're fine. They're playable. This is twice as much. Most of the time they intertapped. I think like Polluted Mire is an example of one. We're not really into them. I think if you have a two mana cycling land, there has to be some kind of upside on it. And when there are some that exist that have upsides, we'll be talking about them later. Uh, finally, lands you can sacrifice to draw a card. The Spheres. We like the Horizon lands that we'll talk about later. I like Roadside Reliquary because it draws two cards, but entering tapped and requiring two mana and a sacrifice, which is kind of three, to draw one card, I'm out. I don't think this is a good rate, and there are a lot of bangers in this set, but that was not one of them. Yes, so on screen right now, you can see our example deck list, our example mana base for a single color. We tried to jam a little bit extra in. Uh, we went below our recommendation of 25 just to show you how far you can stretch 20 bucks uh, for a mana base. There's extra stuff in there. This fell below 20, and if you want to see the full thing on your own time, you can go to Moxfield.com, the best way to build a deck online. You thought we were just going to say the word Moxfield, but no, we're talking about the actual Moxfield site. This is the advertisement section. We're not going to do five ads like this because we have multiple lists to talk about later, but Moxfield is the best way to build your commander deck, to build your land bases because you don't need a format for them. To build a little bit of everything. We have the commander cube on there. I have my pioneer deck on there. We have so many commander decks. If you want to check them out, go look at our profile and follow us. That would be real cool. That would be super cool, but it's time to now finally move on to the second uh, type of mana base, the two-color mana base. We are going to be holding, porting over some of the utility lands and the monocolored utility lands to this, but there's some new rules. Now that we can play dual lands, we got to figure out how to, how to manage that. So I think you should definitely prioritize untapped dual lands, but you should include also some tapped duels so that you make sure that you always have both colors because now we've opened up the possibility of getting color screwed and drawing a hand that only has one color so we got to mitigate that yeah make sure you hit those pips or else you're not playing the game you know the mana base is you know one of the most important parts of the deck so you just can't ignore it as much as single like color decks really can yeah you can't just go i'll just play 14 of each basic and then you know that's fine it's like i think you're losing out a little bit uh we recommend speaking of basics probably between 14 and 19 total so uh the average from seven of our two color budget decks is 16 so maybe you could say eight of each of the basic uh lands for you that could be a good starting point uh and like i said carry over as many of the utility lands and colorless lands uh as you want but you're gonna have to now like mitigate that with extra dual lands so if you want to play 10 colorless lands get ready to play at least 10 duels or more I think that two color is really the sweet spot of building budget. I mean, most of our budget decks fall within that kind yeah. of idea. And I think most of our mana bases are also around the $20 budget and they work very, very well. I mean, your Balmore deck, my uh, my Uro deck, they, they are very consistent. I do stand by it. I stand by that it is, I mean, obviously possible to build a near perfect mana base at $20 or less in any possible color combination. You've already seen it for one. We're going to get into the rest of them <laughs> still. Uh, we're going to talk about untapped dual lands that we really, really like. Step one, first two adds into every two-color deck, no matter what you are doing, Command Tower and Exotic Orchard. They're 49 cents or less, depending on where you get them, or you probably just have one in your pocket right now. It's, maybe it's a little crumpled, but you could still just add it to your deck. These are must-haves. They are dual lands in almost every scenario, and they just are untapped and they fix your mana the best. I have three in my wallet right now, but Command Tower and Exotic Orchard, they're super important. I, I just like, you know, I put them, I love building decks with so many colors in it, and these are always the first ones I go to. The next one is Spire of Industry at 49 cents. You need a little bit of artifact synergies here, but this will tap for any color that you need if you have that. And I feel like a lot of the artifact decks usually start at around like two colors or more. Yeah, it is still worth it, even if the land pains you one to play a dual land, so we're happy to do that. Uh, next, we're gonna get into the, probably what you actually think of when you think of dual lands, check lands. This is like the Glacial Fortress gang. They are between 59 cents and $2.79. They check if you have a island or a plains. And if they do, 
you enter, uh, if it, you do, they enter untapped, which is great for you. These are very often, very, very, very often going to enter untapped. So there's some of the best ones you can get. Oftentimes worth maybe spending even a dollar or two. I think so too. I mean, it's just, you need to so consistently get those lands and get them untapped that these are worth a little bit of the splurge. Yeah, we also recommend enemy pain lands and we'll throw in the allied pain lands, but to talk about the enemy, they are tend to be cheaper than the allied ones. So if you're building an Orzhov deck, you can probably play Caves of Koilos in it. These range from 79 cents to $1.79. But if you're building like a green-white deck, Brushland might be a couple bucks. They allied ones range from $1.29 to $4.49. So just keep that in mind. Enemy colors are going to have an easier time playing their pain land. All the pain lands are kind of cheap. I wouldn't maybe go as high as four, but maybe two. I mean, I think it really depends on the pre-cons that have really come out because Caves of Coilos has been reprinted so many times. But Sulphur Springs didn't get a reprint till like Dom United. Mm -hmm. And that was, I was hurting for that one for a while. It was $10 for a while. Another absolute banger cycle is the Reveal Lands. These are the Snarls from Strixhaven and the Port Town whatever cycle from... Of course. Uh, what? Innistrad? What? Innistrad Shadows Midnight. over Innistrad. Yeah, Shadows <laughs> over Innistrad. You're picking the wrong one. That's why I struggle. They are between 35 cents and a, a dollar. These are all not the most powerful. As you scale up, you might leave these out of your deck. But I think for budget, they are must-have staples. Very easy to include. Especially since, like we said, you're probably playing 16 basics. And if you have either one of the basics, you can play Choked Estuary. Choked Estuary now says, if you have over 70% of your mana base in your hand, you can reveal it and get an untapped duel. It's, it's totally easy. I also think that you're a little bit higher on these than I am, but I have seen them work in Beezies. I've seen them play them four colors and it still works. Well, we're in two colors. I know. I'm, just, would, I'm, just, would, I'm you, just stating. You would play Port Town in a blue-white deck, right? Yes, of course. Of For course. sure. Especially yeah. a budget one. We can we can split hairs later. <laughs> the next one is Balfour Zendikar Tango Lands. These are from $0.49 cents to $0.59, cents, and they come in untapped if you have two or more basics. Easy. I, I think that's incredibly easy, especially if you are playing like the 8 and 8 that we usually play. Notably, these are only coming in allied colors, so I'm sorry. Once again, enemy color players, you don't get these. Next, the Signet Lands, which have recently been completed. Formerly, they were only the allies, but now you get all of them, like even the Viridescent Bog from the Fallout set. $0.49 cents to $0.69, cents, dirt cheap. And like we said, you got to remember we're still in two colors. It's so easy to play one of these. It's kind of the maximum I would play no matter how many colors you have. So when you're two colors, it's great to just have one in your deck. Because when you start playing two or more, you get these weird hands where sometimes if you draw two lands and they're both signet lands, they can't make mana by themselves. So you need something else. But that's not a problem when you only play one. So just do that and you're fine. I mean, this the, I really like the signet lands too because they can tap for your colors regardless of whether you have the color or not. So if you have your, unfortunately, if you kept your reliquary tower in your deck and you also have a signet land, you can still get those colors regardless. Yeah, like if you have two planes and a... Signet land. The blue white signet land, sea of you know, cloud, sea cloud, sky cloud expanse, sky cloud expanse. If you have two islands in that, you can still make white mana. Good lord. Let's move on to the <laughs> slow duels. These are very strong. They're very they're played in uh, all power levels pretty much. They enter untapped if you have uh, two or more other lands. Um, they're good, but they're expensive. Three bucks is the cheapest one, and eighteen dollars is the most expensive one. Obviously, in our twenty dollar mana base, we can't go that high. So maybe you can play. I think the blue green one, Vine, no, not Vine Glimmer, uh, Dream Root Cascade. I think that one's three bucks. But other than that, it's tough. I love you slow duels, but unfortunately, if you're Abzan, just stay away. But everything else, you could probably afford. Maybe squeeze one in there. <laughs> we also have the filter lands, ranging from seventy cents to four dollars and fifty cents. Again, I think it's good to have one filter land. Where of course two colors. That's a free roll. Get your filter lands in here, and then have a good time. The next one is Fable Passage at six dollars. This recently got a reprint in Bloomboro, and I am so happy to see it. It's very good to have in the sweet spot of two colors just so you can get it get the basics that you need and it can maybe come in untapped i just really like this land but as someone who usually plays three or more i don't get to see it that often yeah it's just tough to justify six dollars is like a third of your budget and it's not the best it's not a dual land you know it's any one color just something to keep in mind. I like the card. Maybe it'll go down in the future. And finally, the Industrial Utility Lands, ranging from $0.49 cents to $3.50. That's Gavney Township is the most expensive one. And the cheapest one is, you know, pretty much all of them, like Stencia Blood Hall. These are just nice to have. Uh, we, we still can afford to play quite a few, a solid handful of colorless utility lands. So I think that this is very easy to get in your deck. Some color combinations have access to a little bit more of these, but mostly I'm talking about the Industrial ones. They are all pretty good.
But moving on to tap dual lands. These are a little bit slower, but you will be able to hit your colors. And I do recommend putting at least a couple of these in your deck so you can play your spells consistently. The first one is Path of Ancestry at 35 cents. This is in a lot of pre-cons, and I do like the fact that if you cast your commander, you can scry one too. You, this doesn't have to be in a kindred type deck to get that effect. As long as you're casting your commander somewhat frequently or at all, you can still get that and get those colors that you need. Yeah, I don't think I really have to sell too many people on this, but this is like the holy grail of budget mana fixers. You're going to see this in every single possible uh, category for the rest of this video, and we'll get back to it. But yeah, it's very, very strong. If you think that this is worse than a temple land, uh, I think you're actually wrong. Bad. It's the best tap land you can play in a budget. I think I will say that in terms of mana fixing because it starts scrying you every time uh, you play your commander or possibly other cards as well. Next up, the allied cycling lands. These are the Amonkhet two color enters tap cycling lands. We wanted a little bit more from our lands that cycle for two mana. How about a dual land? I'll take that, especially since they also have types. So the allied cycling lands and the battle for Zendikar play, uh, tango lands also count towards your reveal lands because they have the type island planes. So now we're getting into this like group of lands that love to exist together. Especially if you have things like wood elves or something, go find a forest. You can find these. It is just very nice to have that little bit of like extra synergy in your deck. Yep. Uh, let's move on to the temples. Every two-color deck can pretty much afford to just play a temple. It enters and scries one, and then it's a dual land. 49 cents to 59 cents. They're dirt cheap, and they're just an easy way to tick off yet another dual land in your two-color deck. The next one is the bounce lands at 35 cents to 49 cents. I used to be a little bit lower on these, but I'm a little bit higher on them now. They basically say it will tap for both of your colors, but they come in tapped and you have to bounce a land back to your hand. I I, I think they're pretty good, plus the art from uh, like Double oh, yeah, Masters, the they're, they're, they're like gorgeous. They are very, very pretty, so that probably is what actually did it for you. <laughs> Maybe just a little. I've, I've been playing some Earl lately. It's been good. It's been good, yeah. I think one bounce land, not too shabby. Uh, you can't afford this sometimes, but try to have some synergy. When, even if it's just like a frantic search of your deck, try to have something. Uh, next up, the fast lands, ranging from $1.19 to $4.49. They enter untapped if you have two or less other lands. I like to think of these less as untapped lands that are sometimes tapped, you know, uh, akin to like a Canopy Vista, and I think of them more like tap lands that are sometimes untapped. They basically say if they're in your opening hand, they enter untapped, but other than that, they're probably going to enter tapped. So I categorize them as tap lands most of the time. They are still totally fine. You know, I, we are listing these basically in order. They're right below about temples, I think. I think Commander is usually a longer play game, but if you do need that in your budget, these are a very good option. The next one is Modern Horizons 3, yet again, uh, MDFCs, because they also come in two color combos, 39, 35 cents to $1.29. These have pretty good effects, I think, for, from anything from like giving things plus two plus two in lifelink to a fight spell. And there's also the uh, the red black one I think is pretty good. It does like kind of draw three cards. I think with zero exceptions, every single two color budget deck should be playing their MDFC. It doesn't matter what it does. It doesn't matter if you don't have energy. It literally doesn't matter because they are dual lands. We are considering already playing a tap dual land that doesn't do anything. It's not the end of the world. But when they have a bunch of other stuff on the on this other side, and they are a full spell, we will play them every single time. Please do not leave it out. They are amazing, and I love MDFCs. Oh, oh calm down. Just, we, we get it about the MDFCs. I just love them, and they're really cool. <laughs> and, um, and guys, do you know about MDFCs? Anyways, the next one we have our gain lands. These are 35 cents, and they come in and they gain you one life. But... I think there is a caveat to these. You need synergy of like life gain or something, or if you need, or if you can flicker them or something like that. Because overall, like one life isn't really going to make or break you in Commander, because we have so much life to begin with. I do think you need a little synergy, but you don't need much. Artifact bridges are next, thirty-five cents to forty-nine cents. They also need synergy because they don't do anything, but they're artifacts that are indestructible. So if you can utilize either half of that uh, aspect, then you're in business. We also have tapped typed lands. I think these are also useful sometimes. They're about 35 cents a piece. They're dirt cheap. Um, once you have other things like, if you're blue-black, choked estuary that wants you to reveal an island or a swamp, or wood elves that want you to go get a forest, having an extra version of green-white tap land that is forest plains can be useful. Guild gates are 35 cents, and these usually play into certain strategies like gates winning. Yeah, it's but hard to do that in two colors, but if you somehow have a reason to... 
I mean, Omo, I think, can do the gate-winning thing, right? That's very possible. Uh, next up, Ash Barons, 35 cents. This is a variant on, like, a fetch land. It enters untapped, though. If you're really in a pickle and you don't need the colors, you can just get the mana untapped. So I do like Ash Barons a fair bit. Uh, also, the tapped SNC fetches, ranging from 39 to 59 cents. These are lands, for example, Cabaretti Courtyard. Pay, enters, gain a life, sacrifice it, go get a mountain, forest, or plains, put it on the battlefield, tapped. They're just a little fetch land. They gain you a little bit of life. There are two landfall triggers when they enter. And if you're in an allied color pair, because we are still talking about two color decks, you can play two of these because there will be two of the SNC lands that overlap with both of your colors. And enemy pairs can only play one, but still keep that in mind because if you're playing Terramorphic Expanse and you're not playing Maestro's Theater, you're just playing a worse card. I think so too, because you're going to be sacrificing the Terramorphic and the Evolving pretty immediately. It's not like you have the money for like uh, Herb Organ here because that's out of our that's out of our budget, and so you can't tap them for mana. But if you're going to be sacking them immediately, getting those landfall triggers and this, you'll be getting an extra life out of this too. It is funny because technically, if you are playing Herb Organ in your deck and you play like a Maestro Theater, you can tap it for mana and it'll still sacrifice itself. That, that is cool, but. If we are sticking to this $20 budget, we don't have the money for that and then Most other Most likely not, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about some traps that we kind of don't like playing in two-color decks. The first one is just straight-up vanilla tap lands. If it's a tap land that doesn't do anything and has no other frills on it, I don't want it. No, that's just, that is just too basic here. We do not want that. The next one is the SNC tap lands. This is like Skybridge Tower. These come in tapped. You can tap them for either of your colors, and then they have some sort of expensive effect that is not worth the mana, and I don't want to be doing that with my turn. Yeah, we don't like the spheres, and they enter tapped. These are a little bit better on the face because they are dual lands, but paying four and sacking them to draw, which is basically paying five, it's just not something I'm ever going to be doing. It's like 1% of the time, maybe. And it's not It's not like we don't have other dual lands to go to. The other lands I think are just kind of bad are just storage lands. Even in the proliferate decks, I don't see these do anything. They're just, they're just like, you just end up fiddling around with your resources and they don't produce much. I feel like this is the equivalent of just you wait until I untap lands, but like they're going to be winning by the time you untap and you're like, I have five storage counters on this. You guys are so dead. It's like, but you stored all the mana. I, you're, you're, not, you're even. Uh, also the vivid lands. I think the vivid lands are quite unimpressive. They enter tapped, which is a, a little bit of a downer. Uh, they're not lands I'm ever really going to recommend, honestly. I just don't, I don't like the limited use of them. Another trap in Thriving Lands, and also the Baldur's Gate gates, the ones that basically say, here's a color, you can add any other color and name it, and that will be it. I, these don't do anything. These are just a tapped duel with no frills at this point. Right, we're playing two colors. They don't give us any... We, we literally can't do anything except name the other color we're playing, which just means this is a blue-white tap land that doesn't have any other text on it, so forget it. Uh, lastly, this might sound weird, but we will explain ourselves. Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds. I don't think in two-color decks these are good enough. Uh, I think where they do start shining is when you're playing three or more, and they now represent a bigger choice. When they're only one or two, I don't think they're that much better than just like a basic land. So if you have synergy, if you have landfall synergy, great, that's cool, play them. But other than that, I don't think they're staples. Plus, for two color decks, we have a mana base that you can check out on Moxfield. Or right here, right now, in front yeah. of our faces. Not not an ad, just want to show you again. Well, they're seeing it right now, it's <laughs> over our faces and they're admiring how awesome it is. And they're going, is that really $20 or less? And we're saying, yes. Look at the to, bottom. You can go to Moxfield and see it right now. Not so an ad. It is now time for three color mana bases. This is where it starts to get tricky. This is where some people doubt, you know, whether they can make a mana base. I'm still here to say yes. I'm still here to say you can. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And that includes three color mana bases for $20 or under. Or you could just put our minds to it and watch this video. Of course. I mean, you are going to have more tap lands. We don't want to be going above that. 12 number because you are still going that's going to be a little bit too slow but you will need to use them a little bit more to get the colors that you need as for basic lands we play in our decks between 9 and 16 but with an average of about 12 or 13 so i would probably shoot more for the 12 or 13 uh, for your own rule of thumb and then you can adjust it accordingly um you're gonna need to consider if your dual lands rely on basics like we talked about there's that whole subset of dual lands that all say reveal a type have the type do this with basic lands. So the Tangle lands, the Reveal lands, the uh, the Snarls, and the Tapped Cycling lands, those might all go together in packages. And maybe you don't play them all, or you try to play as many as you can. Because dual lands just have, the math gets crazy. We were talking about two color decks, and it's like, I can play Temple of Enlightenment if I want to, or I don't have to play it. Now, if you're Esper, 
You can play three different temples. Do you want all of them? How many do you want? Maybe you don't want any of them. I'm like scribbling all of my math trying to figure all this out. A lot of the dual lands that come in untapped can carry over because that makes your deck go very, very fast. But not as many of the tapped because that is just giving up percentage points at that point, especially since you can play all of the untapped ones. So why would you be putting in the tapped ones? Right. We find that you still can play plenty of untapped duels while fitting into this $20 budget. The ones we mostly like to carry over, maybe the MH three MDFCs and the cycling tapped duels. Those are mostly the ones that we're going to carry over. You also have much less room now for colorless utility lands. Maybe like four or five max, but don't go crazy with it because now you're going to have a lot of trouble. You don't have two colors. You got three. You need to hit those pips and it's way tougher in three. And unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to a lot of the single color MDFCs. There are just not as much room in your deck to be playing only de like lands that only tap for one color, but you can usually sneak in one or two. Oh, you can still sneak in two or one. You know, get, get, get a few in there, but you just can't play seven, unfortunately, anymore. Uh, three color mana fixing that we do enjoy. I think it's important to reiterate this. Step one, first three cards you add. Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Path of Ancestry. They are now even better and even more mana fixy. They only get better as you add more colors to your deck. We also have tapped Trilands. This is a big one. Everyone thinks of this first, I think. Uh, every three color pair gets one tapped tri land. They come in tapped and they will always tap for all three of your colors because it's just what they say. They range between 35 cents and $1.79 for the most expensive one. I think that is Arcane Sanctum. I think it is too. That one was pretty expensive when I looked it up. These are just your tri albums, but you can't fetch them and they don't cycle, but no one's really using the cycle on those to begin with. Yeah, they're run of the mill. Um, we did talk about we don't like dual lands that don't do anything, but it is different to have a tri land that doesn't do anything because we're fixing for more colors. We're hurting for more colors. <laughs> yeah. The next one is MH3 tri fetches. These will get a basic of your type, or they can cycle if you have one of each color that you can pay with. I mean, and also this doesn't automatically fetch, which I really like about it. But also, 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 these tap for colorless and enter the battlefield untapped. So like, for, you know, Forget Terramorphic at first, at least, because we're starting with this. We've got whatever landscape it's called. Now, not only can it produce mana until I need to crack it, crack it at any point, get any land, but it also cycles. Like, these lands are amazing. You should 1,000% include yours. Uh, also, the SNC fetches only if you're in a shard type, but if you are, pretty much another auto-include. We They're very, very cheap. And like we said, Terramorphic and Evolving Wilds, I think they're good now. I think we start playing them in three colors. And we also have slow fetches. I think these are fine. If you really are hurting to get extra lands, then maybe it's fine. It's 35 cents to 49 cents, but they come in tap to fetch. Yeah, they are so bleh. I they're really, fine. you know, I don't want to say they're terrible, but I've never really wanted to play them either. Uh, also, randomly, I don't know where to mention this, Murmuring Bosk is here. It's $1.29. It's just an extra Abzan Triland, so you should play it in Abzan. <laughs> Let's go down to traps. I think a lot of the traps from the previous mana bases, the one and two colors, do carry over. We have said when it's not the same, you know, like Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic, we're higher on them in three colors, but the rest pretty much still traps. Also, a couple real big stinkers, Layers. They return a land, but they only tap for one mana, so just play Bounce Lands instead. I am not returning lands to my hand unless I get more than one mana out of it, and layers are not worth it. The next one is Opal Palace. I find that this is in pre-cons more than I'd really expect. You can tap it for colorless, or you can tap it and filter one mana into it to get one mana of any color, but then if you cast your commander with it, you also get counters on it, which is almost never relevant. I really hate lands that make you put mana into it and also tap the land for colors because I'm not trying to go that slow. I, that is never something I ever want to do. Uh, in limited, it's okay sometimes, but like in commander, there's four players at this game and I'm not about to stumble around spending two mana to make one mana. And the same is true for study hall. I don't even care what it says on the rest of it. It's not good enough to play the land. Sometimes if these lands were like really great, if sure if one comes around, that's great. And also happens to randomly filter mana, that's, that's great, but we, we would then be playing it for the other part and not the filtering part ever. Next up, Rupture Spire and Gateway Plaza. Every land that says ETB tapped, sacrifice it unless you pay one, and then it taps for rainbow. The rainbow's nice, but I don't want to pay one. This is the same thing. Why am I paying for my lands to come in? Just give me a basic at that point. I. I'm, I don't want to have this as my first, you know, like in my opening hand, I go, oh man, my t first two turns completely ruined. Yeah, turn one, tap land, Scuffed. turn two, rupture spire, tap the other land, pass, like, okay, yeah. not great. And also the panoramas, they have been, I think, fully cycled out at this point. Um, they're only for the allied shards, but like, 
They do enter untapped. You have to pay one and tap it and sack it to get a thing. I don't really like these too much. I think you're just better off not doing it. This is what our mana base looks like. This is our three color example mana base. I went Saltai for this one. I know I'm trying to spice things up. The last one was Boros, so this one is Saltai. I hope you like it. Please check out Moxfield to see it for longer. But what is next? The next one is four and five colors, which is possible. BZ's actually built a deck that is less than $20. I had a $20 deck. The whole deck was $20. So we can definitely do your mana base for $20. Yeah, absolutely. This is We're going to lump them together because they are very, very similar at, at this point. Uh, the basic lands. I'm saying probably less than 12 unless you have some kind of specific synergy that wants basics for whatever reason. I mean, with your four and five color decks, you're usually going to need to hit a lot of those pips, especially if you're trying to play like Budget Joda, for instance, either one. You're still going to be hurting if you put in too many basics. Also, you should recognize whether your deck leans a certain way or if you need colors in a fr in the first few turns. For instance, in my non-budget uh five color deck it still applies to this logic because i still need to ramp in the first three turns so i need green in those first three turns which is why i prioritize having green in my mana sources yeah most of the time if you're playing green in the four or five colors that's the number of basics you play the most of that's the number of dual lands you play the most of don't just do the thing where you play an exactly even number of dual lands because you can play towards your colors that's going to be way much better uh, way better uh, to get three plus colors you're going to have to sacrifice on the lands coming in untapped so now we're pushing it, you know. I'm probably gonna try to go up to like 10 tap lands. I wanna make sure I can cast all my spells, but I just still don't wanna go into Clunkyville. Yeah, and you cannot be playing very many colorless utility lands or single color MDFCs. You might, you might be able to sneak in one. Sometimes I sneak in Balaged into it just because getting stuff from Graveyard is sometimes relevant, but with every other one, you can't just sneak it in. It's not worth it as they're in point. Yeah, and unfortunately, Balaged might also be out of the equation because it's like seven bucks. You oh, definitely oof. don't have That's space. That's even worse. Yeah, you definitely don't have space in four or five colors for that. Uh, your budget's going to get stretched thin. Be diligent. Try to get all the way up to 20 or whatever your personal number is because it's, well, it's well worth having a functional mana base that can actually cast spells. I know that if you're building like a $50 deck, it's very tempting to just throw all the value in and play seven $5 cards. That's not doable. You have to eat some of your vegetables, build the mana base first, try to hit a $20 mana base. Then you can build the rest of the deck accordingly. That's probably a better way to go, a healthier way to go about it. Also, when it comes to putting lands in your deck, you don't need every version of a certain land. You don't need every duel. You don't need every tri land because your deck will not skew that way. If your deck is 70% Rakdos and then 30% the rest of the colors, you should be like prioritizing having like Dragon Skull over like a, a tri land that really doesn't do much for you or only taps for one of the colors that you really are prioritizing. Like if you're a, yeah, if you are a blue, white, red, green deck and you want to ramp with some green spells early, you should probably make sure most of your lands touch green. Most of the dual lands have green as half of them. And you can swap, like, Mystic Monastery out for something. You don't have to play Mystic Monastery if your deck needs green mana early. Focusing on the pips that you really need to hit, like, prioritizing those is really important in building your mana base so you can actually play those spells in the long run. Yeah, it's tough to talk about more color-fixing duels that we like because there are no four color uh, color fixers. And the five color ones we talked about, we kind of already talked about them. Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Path of Ancestry. These are must plays. There's also specific rainbow lands. Depending on your deck strategy, these can tap for a rainbow. There's Pillar of the Prunes for multicolored if you have like a Niv-Mizzet Reborn, Ally Encampment for allies, Spire of Industry for artifacts, and the Seed Core for Phyrexians, just to name a few. Yeah, just keep an eye out. You probably maybe get 0.5 on average, you know, of those types of lands. Uh, if you want to spend six bucks, you could go Horizon of Progress. I am now thinking you definitely don't have room in your budget for that when you're going to have to find all of the, basically find all of the untapped duels and some of the tapped tri lands that cost like $2 or less. And then you're going to probably have to splurge for a few two or $3 lands to round things out. And I really don't think you'll have space left over. I mean, but if you're making a $26 budget deck and your mana base is $20, I think you have the room for a $6 card. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't even follow that. The whole deck is $26? No, no, your mana base is $26. Oh, if you but just But you like, only have $20 built into it. I think you have room for a $6 card. Like, if you say you're building a $20 mana base and your mom hands you $6, <laughs> yeah. we're in business. <laughs> we have room for Horizon of Progress, but we're moving on to traps because... 
there are a few pitfalls that you can fall into when making a four and five color deck. The first one is Myriad Landscape. One, this is coming in tapped. Two, this is tapping for colorless, which is very hard to do or to cast your spells. And three, you can only find two of the same type of basic with it. And usually that's not what you want to be doing in five colors. Yeah, we mentioned we're only going to be playing like, what did I say, 12 or less basics. And they're all going to be split between five. So you maybe have like three, two, 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 two at the very most. And so now it's like, oh, I need to find mountain, but I already have a mountain, so I can't do that. It's just, it, this card just gets really terrible when you have to juggle too many colors. I also have too many basic lands. It's a trap. We mentioned it before, but you really don't want to have 20 basic lands in your deck. That's what happened to some of these five color precons, and people were complaining that they were unplayable because they could never hit their colors. I mean, yeah, the the combination of the commander usually needing a ton of pips, and then all of these basics coming in, and it's like, okay, well, technically I can cast my spells, but not consistently. I can cast them with the number, but not the actual type. It just makes it really, really rough to play. Seclude Courtyard and Unclaimed Territory. These are the types that they will tap for any color, but only if you're casting X creature type. I find that in your deck, you are usually not playing enough of that creature type to where it matters, and then you are going to be stuck with the un with the untapped, like colorless version, and that's not what you want to be doing. Yeah, if you have twenty five humans in your deck, these will be dual lands for, you know, fifty percent of your spells. Maybe I don't know, maybe a little bit less. Less, less like, probably. It's just not that exciting. I think I'd rather just play dual lands, get my stuff situated. Even if some of them have to come in tapped, I really avoid these things at all costs. And lastly. One of my favorite traps, uh, Chromatic Lantern. I understand how some people do gravitate towards this card and like this card when we get outside of budget, but this is a $4.50 card. It's sort of honorarily a mana-based card because it helps fix your mana, uh, but when we're building like a $50 deck, this is not worth 10% of our budget. I think this card is unusable, really. And, and not only because I think it's low impact and you can build a very, very reliable mana base for $20, like the one you're seeing right now. You can see it on screen right now. I think I covered a lot of bases. I went, I went to try to build the trickiest of these. And I think the trickiest mana base to build in four or five colors is a four color non-green mana base. So that's what I did as an example. You guys can see this here. Um, not too hard to adjust this to five color if you want to just, you know, throw in a few more green lands, the tri lands, whatever you want to do. But yeah, Chromatic Lantern, I just don't, I don't think it would help this mana base. And I don't think it would be worth $4.50 either. Chromatic Lantern, don't do it. Not even once. <laughs> if you want to know what other advice we got for you now that we've sat through this entire long, very informative uh, mana base video, you can check out this video.